Westfield Memorial Hospital provides high-quality health care to residents of Western New York, offering patients the most sophisticated medical advancements while keeping the ease and familiarity of a community hospital. Support for Chautauqua Sunrise has been provided by WRFA 107.9 FM, Jamestown's public radio station, streaming online 24-7 at WRFALP.com. Low power to the people. Chautauqua Sunrise is made possible by a grant from Fredonia Place, a continuing care retirement community providing dignity in a modern luxury environment. Meter's Restaurant, a family tradition for over 50 years in downtown Ripley, is a proud supporter of Chautauqua Sunrise. Meter's provides all-day dining, banquet services, and custom catering, specializing in pie. Funding for Chautauqua Sunrise is provided in part by the Chautauqua County Industrial Development Agency with offices in Jamestown, Dunkirk, and Westfield, helping businesses to prosper throughout Chautauqua County. The Chautauqua Center. Are you looking for affordable medical, dental, or counseling services? The Chautauqua Center is always accepting new patients at their Jamestown and Dunkirk locations. They offer discounted prescriptions and accept all insurances. From the Access Chautauqua Studios in Mayville, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Chautauqua Sunrise is hosted by Doc Hamels and supported by the award-winning volunteers at Access Chautauqua. We are here to share local news, colorful interviews, and events of interest to everyone. Chautauqua Sunrise is broadcast live Saturday mornings each week from 9 to 10 a.m. Send events via email or call us live. Check us out on YouTube and Facebook. And now, from the Access Chautauqua Studios, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Well, good Saturday morning to all of you, and welcome to Chautauqua Sunrise. I'm Doc Hamels, in the flesh. Well, gosh, it's a beautiful, beautiful stretch of weather we're having right now, isn't it? This is what we've been waiting for, seems like forever. Uh, you know, we, I was looking back in May. In May, we had every, every season, I think. We had winter, we had summer, we had spring and fall. And now June is starting out pretty well, so I'm, I'm really excited about that. So, hope you're having a great weekend and a great day. And uh, uh, first of all, good morning to the whole world. We're streaming live as always, and um, thanks for the notes that people are leaving me and saying hi and so forth. Please continue that. We love it here. And uh, if you ever have a question about what we're doing here, leave us a question. I want to do a shout out to my cousin Barb down at Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, near Harrisburg, I believe it is. Uh, she watches the show every every Saturday, it turns out, so hi, Barb. <laughs> uh, and to my uh, grandson, Caden, down in Florida, he uh, watches it quite often. He's up visiting us this week, and uh, so uh, they're, they're regular fans. And, of course, I have to say hi to my brother. Hi, Bob. <laughs> he checks in from time to time. Um, also, good afternoon to all of our fans and listeners that listen to us on WRFA 107.9. Low power to the people. Thanks for listening on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock in Jamestown. Uh, so glad you could join us. Got a really important show uh, to talk about water safety and, and things that maybe you haven't thought about, especially now that a lot of us are doing, as we call, staycations, staying in, in the area because of the pandemic. Um, a lot of people are taking to the water and other kinds of activities near water. So stay tuned. We got a really good show. Um, Lots of other things to talk about. Uh, if you have a desire to call in to make an announcement, to share some information, do a shout out like I just did, a birthday, anniversary, your clever organization maybe finally can put together an activity that you want to do or a fundraiser, give us a call at 716-753-5225. So happy to hear from you. If you don't want to talk to me live, which we do here, uh, 
The guys will take down the information, write down, and just hand it to me, and we'll make that announcement for you. Don't hesitate, please. Um, this seems hard to believe, but this is June, as we all know, and this is going to end our sixth season on the air here at Access Chautauqua, which seems like a long time, but I've got an even better announcement. Chuck Kelsey, who's the godfather, or one of the uncles or godfathers, I don't know what exactly his title is here, but he's like the guru here at the station, uh, station manager. He uh, sent me a little email the other day sharing the fact that uh, Access Chautauqua is 25 years old this month. Wow. So I had to think back how long I, I've been associated with the uh, station. And I think I don't go back 25 years. I go back 24 years, I think. Uh, Reed Powers somehow talked me into being on in the senior report. And I think I was talking about BOCES at the time. And uh, so I've had a, a long, long relationship with the, the studio here. And it's been awesome. I hope you've been enjoying all the programming the guys do here. And um, it, it's a labor of love. It, as you all know, it's a volunteer program here. And, um, and we appreciate that you watch and participate, give us feedback and so forth. So here's to another 25 years, Chuck, and, and to the uh, Devin and all the other folks that uh, participated, Doug, uh, that uh, got the, the studio started way back down at the railroad station. And a lot of people don't realize that it started down there in Mayville, just down the road. Uh, it's this tiny little room, and they had eight curtains, I think, on the walls and this horrible little desk that Reed used to sit at, and I would squinch up next to him, almost getting my eye poked out because his hands would be flying all over the place. And those of you that remember Reed, remember he was very animated. And then they moved it up to the Chautauqua School for a while, and that was really kind of a cool setup. But then this opportunity here at the old Mayville School came, and boy, oh boy, this is a great studio. If you've never had an opportunity to be here, you should try to check it out sometime and uh, drop us a line. We'll set up an opportunity to, for you to have a little tour or whatever. Uh, happy to do that. So anyways, happy 25th and uh, wishes for many more years of, of programming. Over in uh, Westfield and the Ripley, and I think they go into Brockton area, the, there are lighthouses popping up everywhere. And um, this is through the uh, Barcelona, Westfield, Westfield, Barcelona, I'm not sure which way it goes. We'll go Westfield, Barcelona, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, they sponsored three years ago the fish you probably saw that in the opening credits, uh, the fish I put together for the sh uh, show here. And then last year were wine bottles, and we had wine bottles everywhere, and Chautauqua Sunrise had a bottle. And this year we're doing lighthouses, and so uh, I put together one for the show, and you're gonna see it. Oh, there it is, there's a, a big view and a little view. I, 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 there's my lighthouse. <laughs> And I couldn't figure out what I should be doing in there because I, I decided to draw myself in there. I was going to do the whole, the whole crew, Justin, but there wasn't enough room. So then I just said, well, I'll just put an American flag in my hand. <laughs> Anyways, those, those are over in Moore Park. Uh, I did the rotary one as well, but uh, I, I drove down the road yesterday and today, and I saw some uh, in store windows and so forth. So uh, take a tour. They uh, have a map, and you can go visit all of the lighthouses. I, I, I give one clue. There's one over at the uh, Westfield Memorial Hospital. It's outstanding. Uh, Beth Patry did it, and uh, uh, I, I won't tell you what it looks like. It's just outstanding. I mean, I, I'm always jealous because mine always look like folk art, and others they look like high-end productions. And this one is definitely right up there in the top one percent of really fine art. And um, so, anyways, that's going on. And unfortunately, there's no, there was no First Friday this month. I still haven't heard. So you're going to have to, uh, Sue Poster's got to let me know about uh, if there's going to be um, uh, First Friday in July. Now, I know the Ox Roast has been canceled. The Mayville Parade has been canceled. <laughs> um, so I don't know about First Friday. So she'll let me know on that. We'll make that announcement. Anyways, you're going to see uh, lighthouses all up and down Route 20 and so forth. And I know it goes into Ripley. And I think up into Portland a little bit maybe too. Barcelona and so forth. Okay, we're still in the throes of this pandemic. We're still uh, scratching our way out. Certain parts of uh, our economy is opening up, and yet still we find that there's gonna be some unemployment, which is throwing people and their finances into disarray. Here's my spiel, here we go again. I know I've been doing this every week, and I promised myself I was gonna do this because I, I'm this passionate about it. There is no reason in the world that your family, your children, yourself, whomever, your parents should be 
going to bed hungry or waking up hungry because there's food available at food banks, all right? Um, this is a very unusual time that we live in. It's not your fault if you're, you're struggling financially for food or if you know somebody. I'm gonna go through the list that I have. There's certainly more than this, uh, I'm sure, but these are the ones I could find readily one day. And um, you fill out a form, it's pretty simple. Get some really good nutritious foods especially when uh, the growing season comes into full swing, you get a lot of fresh local produce as well. So in Ripley, it's uh, located at the school building on North State Street. It's at the corner of Route 20 and 76, the school, and uh, it's right on the corner of the, of the school, uh, actually my old office there. In Brockton, it's at 7081 US 20 in Westfield, actually Westfield, Portland, but it's, it's the Brockton Food Bank. There's a St. Susan Center uh, that does the uh, meals for folks at 31 Water Street. Uh, Westfield, there's a food bank at United Methodist Church. Susan's Pantry in Sherman at 107 West Main Street. There's a food bank right next to uh, St. Susan's at 31 Water Street. There's a food bank in Silver Creek. I don't have the address, but I know there's one there. You can look that one up. Chautauqua County Rural Ministry at 319 Washington Street in Dunkirk. St. Paul's uh, Episcopal Church in Dun uh, Mayville, excuse me. Uh, Northeast Pennsylvania has a community food pantry at 30 Bothell Street. And then the Salvation Armies, both in Jamestown and in Dunkirk, provide uh, delivery of food. And uh, th thank you, Jeff. There's the numbers, I'll read them to you again. Uh, Jamestown, 664-4108, 664-4108. And Dunkirk, 366-3701, 366-3701. And I'm told if you call, you make an appointment, they will uh, set up a time to deliver the food. It's safe, they uh, will drop the food at your door, they'll ring the bell and then they leave. They ask you not to talk to the driver, shake hands or anything like that because we still want to make sure we do social distancing, okay? But they uh, will deliver food to you if you call. So there you have it. All right, think about it. Don't be shy and don't feel embarrassed. As I always mention, when we were kids, my dad used to take us down to the armory in Buffalo and we got food and it was okay. First, the powdered milk wasn't all that great, but I don't think they do that anymore. <laughs> All right, let's do some announcing um, from around the area. All right, uh, join us in uplifting Northern Chautauqua County by, by participating in uh, your chalk drawing showcase. All right, let me see what this is here now. All right, we are looking for artwork that inspires hope, uplifts the spirit, makes people smile and feel happy, and overall shows how you make others happy. Be creative. All ages are welcome to create chalk masterpieces in driveways or sidewalks and with owner's permission in front of stores. If you are in need of chalk, please call uh, Ida Lord at the Northern Chautauqua Community Foundation or Victoria Howell, same place, at 560-5338. And they'll do their best to get chalk to you. And they're gonna present some awards uh, follow, in the following age categories, two to five, six to 12, 13 to 18, and 18 and up. Once your artwork is completed, please take a photo of it and upload it to Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or hashtag UpliftCHQ. <clears throat> and then um, they're going to show those off and uh, give out some awards. And that can be for anywhere from Ripley to Irving to Casadega. All of Northern Chautauqua County can participate. For more information, go to nccfoundation, all one word, dot org. Okay. Um, Mark Geis was on the show not long ago and uh, reminded businesses as you prepare to open, and we know this is an ongoing rolling kind of a thing, that you must reaffirm your business. You need to make sure that you've registered and uh, gone to the uh, forward.newyork.gov, all right, forward.newyork.gov site. There it is, right there and you have to uh, go in there, register, uh, read what it tells you to do as far as having the precautions of hygiene and sanitation, and that you agree to all that, and then you get a little certificate, which then you post in your window of your business or wherever, and 
There you go. You're ready to, to open up. If you don't have this, you can get in trouble. So please, please, please affirm this. And if you have any questions, you always can call the Chamber of Commerce, and they're more than happy to help you out, or, or Chautauqua County uh, IDA. Okay? All right, let's move on. This note here from the Chamber says, Be a tourist here at home. Kind of fits with today's theme. We're going to be talking about boating and water safety. Uh, this time of year, is we're in the summer season. Okay, and um, let's see here. Summer tends to start with a plethora of activities. It was certainly a low-key kickoff this year, as we all know, it kind of started out cool and wet. Uh, this summer, uh, maybe without many events, but uh, we've grown to love and know that Chautauqua County has a whole lot to offer. Your normal summer itinerary uh, usually is abundant with festivals and major concerts and lectures and that, but it's going to be different this year. There will be plenty of summer and there will be plenty of ways to enjoy it right here in our beautiful corridor of New York State. Think about it. We're fortunate to live in a region with beautiful lakes and parks. See how this is This is like a perfect segue. We can stay healthy uh, and socially distant while we enjoy these great amenities that we normally take for granted. There may be the usual influx of tourists in our, uh, excuse me, there may not be the usual influx of tourists in our region, but if your summer plans include a staycation, get out on the water. You can go fishing and support uh, a local take, tackle or bait shop. You can get takeout uh, or delivery from your favorite local restaurants. And now can find a spot with safe and appropriate outdoor dining. You can play golf. You can enjoy ice cream cones from a local uh, stand. Visit your local farmer's market for the finest locally grown produce. Uh, browse your local nursery and take home some beautiful plants and flowers. Did that. Did the takeout. Uh, take a hike and enjoy a picnic on our local um, state or county parklands. Visit our local beaches along our beautiful lakes. Uh, visit some of the local shops and spend your tourist dollars right here at home. Get away from your home and spend a night or two at a local hotel. The uh, Chautauqua County Visitors Bureau has provided some links to information about things you can do in Chautauqua County this summer. You can go to tourchautauqua.com backslash COVID-19. Now, now more than ever, it's a time to enjoy what we have right here in Chautauqua County. So even without the trappings that we normally take for granted, we can appreciate the natural beauty right here in our own backyard and boost our local business community that has been hit hard this year. Shop safe, shop small, and shop local this summer. I like it, and that fits the theme that we've been doing right here for a long time. All right, uh, here's another announcement from the Chamber of Commerce. This is a this kind of goes with uh, what happened in Fredonia last year and the National Comedy Center. Remember, we were talking about voting and all that sort of thing. Well, Chautauqua, I'm assuming it's the institution, has been nominated for U.S. Today's Best Small Town Cultural Scene and all local people are encouraged to vote. You can vote daily through June 29th by visiting vote.chq.org. Vote.chq.org. You can also sign up for daily reminders to vote, which is really cool. I did that when it was uh, for Fredonia, and every day I got a little text message, says, did you vote yet? And uh, I would jump on my phone and vote right away. We uh, had some tremendous successes this year for local communities and attractions in Fredonia. As you know, won the season five vote in the Small Business Revolution, and the National Comedy Center won the USA Today Best New Muse Museum poll. Uh, so let's all work together and make this just as successful this year for Chautauqua. All right. Now I got a few things to announce, and uh, I'm gonna try to do this in a straightforward manner. <laughs> okay. Habitat for Humanity is asking you to consider uh, donating to the big CHQ event, which is uh, on right now. And um, this is where you donate online to your favorite organization or organizations. And um, <clears throat> give big CHQ. That's where you go for the website. Give big CHQ is the first word, dot org. 
and then backslash organizations, and then you're going to find, for instance, the Chautauqua Area Habitat for Humanity. Their big funder got, fundraiser got canceled, so Mike Ricketts um, has asked for you to support them that way. Okay. Another thing to keep in mind is the Jamestown Cruising cancellation. Uh, it's, it says here the Jamestown Community Chamber of Commerce and Dirk Cobbler's uh, Automobile <laughs> Association regretfully announced that the Jamestown Cruise Inn will not be held this August. This annual event has been held for 27 years, drawing over 200 classic and custom cars, trucks, and thousands of spectators to downtown Jamestown. With a focus on the health and safety of the entire community, the decision has been made to cancel this year's cruise in. Bummer. Plans are already underway though for next year, August 20th, 2021. So mark your calendar for that one. Okay, I talked about that. All right, going right along with the big CHQ donation, uh, the Audubon Community Nature Center uh, is asking for your support as well during the June 1, June 12, 11th fund drive coordinated by the Chautauqua Region Community Foundation and Northern Chautauqua Community Foundation. Normally this time of year, thousands of school kids would be visiting Audubon, experiencing uh, discovery walks led by staff and trained volunteers. Days and evenings would be filled with adults enjoying and learning all classes, workshops, and presentations. Social distancing guidelines and state restrictions have significantly reduced the center's ability to generate income due to suspensions of these school and community programs. At the same time, Audubon's trails have been busier than ever. People are taking advantage of the mental, emotional, and physical health benefits of spending time outdoors during this difficult time. So they're asking you to consider a donation to them as well. So as we know, um, lots of the organizations are hurting, and uh, this is a great way to support them as we have the restaurants and other organizations. And finally, this is just a general one that um, there are, I don't know, it's like over a hundred different organizations are going to be part of the, uh, oh, last year was 97 organizations. They raised $180,000 through the big CHQ, and uh, the, the foundations are asking you to support those. And if you have any questions, you can always contact the foundations. Um, I know for some of us, it might you might be financially strapped, but if you're able to, give what you can, okay? So let's support each other, support Chautauqua County, stick around, enjoy what we have, and uh, we're gonna be right back. Stay tuned, we got a great show in store for you. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest! You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Times I've stared down a deer on the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which way are you going there, Charlie? <laughs> well, I want to welcome back Ro uh, Woodard, who uh, has been a, a water and boating safety instructor for a zillion years. Um, well, that's a good thing. And uh, she was on our show last year, and so we're glad to have you back. Very enjoyable. Uh, lots of fun to talk with. So good morning, Ro. Oh, glad to be here. Glad to be invited back. Th does it seem possible it was a year ago we I, did this? No, you said when we finished, you said put it on your calendar. I put we it did. on the calendar and then here, here, we, are. It, here we are. <laughs> Who would have ever thought? So um, the reason why I wanted to have you at this time of the year <clears throat> is because we're really at the beginning of summer. Finally. <laughs> finally, finally, yeah. <laughs> it seems like <clears throat> less than a month ago we had snow. I mean, on May 8th. I, 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 that's like been embroiled in my mind. Um, but here we are, and we're in the 70s and 80 degree weather, and, and everybody is flocking to just what they, we just talked about, staycations in Chautauqua County. So from your perspective, Ro, what, what seems to be the big attractions right now with people staying home? Well, you know, it's, it's, it, as, as we've mentioned, you know, Chautauqua County is probably the best place to stay home. Yeah. Um, the, the lake is a fabulous place, you know, lots of great places to hike and, and trails. Um, I've noticed, you know, tons of people out on the lake. I think the lake is busier than it has been in a number of years. No, when you say lake, you're saying Chautauqua Lake. I'm, I'm saying Chautauqua Lake, okay. yeah. Because yeah. people say. Because wow. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure all lakes are busy, but yeah. um, have, that's where, where I've been out mm -hmm. so far this year. And Chautauqua Lake is, is seems to be hopping. Good. Um, 
What so? I, I mentioned you, you you were an instructor and so forth. Could you just give us kind of like a, a brief summary of your career? Because some folks maybe don't know you. Yeah, well, sure. And it's, it's, it's you know, it can be brief because it really wasn't quite a zillion years. It just, <laughs> <laughs> it just feels that way. <laughs> it just, just seems like it might be that way. Um, I'm, I'm retired from New York State Parks, mm -hmm. and it's the Marine Services Bureau. Um, New York State Parks is the Recreational Boating Safety Office for the state. Mm -hmm. So boating safety courses, and uh, support from marine law enforcement and, and things like that all come through state parks. It's kind of a little, little, little niche of them um, in addition to having some of the most outstanding properties for you to go to and, mm -hmm. and have your staycation at also. Um, so I was the boating safety educator and uh, as, as part of that um, I had the opportunity to, to oversee the boating education programs and then I moved into to the wear it program which is, is a very simple Simple idea is, is I've just spent a lot of time asking boaters to wear a life jacket. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also with paddle safety. And uh, I love to paddle and so it was a, a really nice opportunity for me to, to both work in what I love to do and, and do what I love to do. How does a person get into this program? Were you in Girl Scouts or? or oh, I was a Girl Scout, oh yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I figured you must have had a passion somewhere yeah. along the line because it's you know that's uh, you know that's kind of a niche area that you know you, that not everybody would go down. So yeah, yeah, no. Well, I kind of got into it professionally, kind of by accident. But mm -hmm. I started out boating on Chautauqua Lake. Uh, my first boating experience with my father, mm -hmm. who you knew, uh, yeah. um, and uh, was in a, a Chautauqua Lake double ender, which were, were boats that were built on Chautauqua Lake. They looked a little like a canoe, a little like a guide boat, but they were mm. built locally built. Um, and he loved to fish and. Uh, my first experience was going out with him fishing and, and rowing a little double ender. And from there, we had a, a, a motorboat, and I was in Girl Scouts, where Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, the, those organizations are, are fabulous for teaching people water mm -hmm. safety and boating. Um, you know, did canoeing through there. And just always loved the water. And had the opportunity, the state was looking for somebody, and, and my name was on the list. Oh, wow. And I think that uh, it was it was was great to to have that opportunity. Super. We forget that we there's so many people out there that are just trying to get people to be safe and think and so forth. So, with that thought in mind, why do you have to have a program called Wear It for for life jackets? I mean, to me, I won't go on the water without a life jacket. So, I mean, is it a stigma or what's the thing? I, you know, it's it's. <clears throat> It's interesting because because I'm, I'm passionate about the life jacket and, mm -hmm. and everybody jokes, you know, um, I had the opportunity to be out the other day and a friend said, did you want to go for a boat ride? And he says, I got jackets. I said, oh, my jacket's in the car. <laughs> I, I'm ready for a have, boat ride. Have I, jacket, will have, will. Have jacket will, will travel. Um, not really sure. I think it's an education issue mm -hmm. um, that people feel I'm in my boat and because I'm in my boat and I have no intention to be anywhere else, I'm not, not going to go swimming, I'll be safe. Um, and, and don't put a life jacket on. Uh, I was out on the, the outlet uh, one of the nice days last week and it was midweek and probably two dozen people out there on the water. Uh, I only saw, I saw a child in a life jacket and one adult in a life jacket. Oh boy. Uh, and several people didn't have life jackets mm -hmm. even with them. And that, that you know, they're, they're kind of at risk, but they're gonna say, oh, it's hot, it's uncomfortable, I'll be okay. It's only the outlet I can I can swim. Um, you know, those are all all reasons people give. They say um, they can swim until they get into the water, and then they realize they can't stand up. Well, can't stand <laughs> up, or or when you when you go into the water from a boat, uh, it's not like going for a swim, mm -hmm. because most people who drown in boating accidents are swimmers. Uh, it's an, an unexpected event, and it happens quick, and you haven't got time to control your breathing. You haven't got time to, yeah, to get you yourself all set. Yeah, you a big of water, and you're starting you're, to sink. Yeah, you're all, all of a sudden in the water, and you might be disoriented, mm -hmm. um, and it happens fast. It's, it's not like you can prepare. You know, People who have life jackets with them will say, well, I've got it with me. It's on the back of my seat. It's <laughs> under my bungee cords. Yeah. Um, it's stuffed under, sun, under the underside. i got my life jacket. I'll be okay. Uh, but if you're in the water, and your life jacket's in the boat, and the boat's floating away, you're not going to be okay. Yeah. Um, that having it on is is really the best best thing you can do. Do you have any statistics on these kinds of things? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, they're, they're kind of sobering, and I'm going to talk paddling specifically okay. here. Um, in New York State, um, we've been concerned, and that's why I went into that that educational aspect with with Marine Services Bureau. 
was because we were seeing in, in voting fatalities in New York State uh, we were going almost 50% were paddle sports, which would be a boat without a motor. So it might be a rowboat, kayak, canoe, mm -hmm. pedal boat. Uh, and, and they were all involving people not wearing a life jacket for the most part. And the only reason that they, they were a fatality, the only reason they didn't make it back to paddle another day was because they fell out of their boat and they could not keep their mouth and nose above the water until somebody could rescue them or they could get back in their boat. There wasn't anything wrong with them. They didn't hit their head. You know, they, they, they didn't get hit by something. All they did was, we call it an out-of-boat experience. Mm -hmm. They were, were no longer in their boat and they, they were unable to swim, unable to get back to the boat, unable for someone else to pick them up and get them in before they drowned. Wow. And statistically wise, in, in, in New York State, all over for all kinds of boating accidents, of roughly 80% um, are drownings. So mm. once again, the only thing wrong with that person is they're no longer in their boat. It mm -hmm. uh, wasn't two boats crashing in together and having trauma or anything. Uh, and estimates by, by the experts are that if you had a life jacket on in, in that same situation, that probably 80% would survive. Mm. A life jacket's not a magic bullet. It won't save you every mm -hmm. time. There are, are circumstances where you might not survive. Um, but quite often, there is no survival once you get in. Um, There's no bad play jacket. once you're in there, yeah. When, once you're <clears> in, yeah. So if, if you had a life jacket and let's say you slipped and you bumped your head and got knocked out and you fell in the water, the jacket should support you, right? Well, it will support you. Um, life jackets like the, the, the one you got here, mm -hmm. um, which is a, is, a, is a paddling life jacket. Um, this is called a, a type, type three. It's a vest. It's the, probably the most common kind. Very versatile. There's a lot of different styles. Mm -hmm. So you can pick something that feels comfortable, looks good, uh, works for you. Um, this one will, will float you. If you're unconscious, it'll float you, but it will not float you with your face up. Good boy. Um, so that you have to be conscious. You have to be able to, to do some swimming movements to keep your face up. Mm -hmm. um, the type ones, which if anybody's ever been on a, a uh, cruise. Right, those big boxy the, the big, things. The big lovely orange, orange <laughs> things. Chunks of rectangular stuff. Yep, super mm. safe um, and they're meant to turn your face up. Right. Uh, if you're boating on Lake Erie, that's, a that's one you should have on your boat. Mm. Um, you might want to wear something that's more comfortable but you might want to have that type one for an emergency situation if you're way out on Lake Erie. Uh, but this is the, what commonly what, what paddlers um, where mm -hmm. and this will be fine uh, I think everybody always says well what if you hit your head and you can't swim that's probably fairly rare mm -hmm. uh, and you know you're never 100 percent safe a seatbelt doesn't right. always save right. you um, you're but, just trying to reduce the but you're going to reduce yeah. and and I wouldn't go out without it the paddling jackets are, are great um, they, they adjust at the the top they adjust on the side uh, so that you can put them and mold them to your body mm -hmm. and people say oh they're hot and uncomfortable this this well you'll be a little warm but you can adjust this to your body to be very comfortable that you can forget you're wearing it if, if you get used to doing that and then for paddling uh, a paddling jacket has the back is either a mesh or else it's cut high oh, so, you so when you sit cool. in the seat mm -hmm. well you can stay cool but when you're you've got the seat in oh, a lot of the kayaks right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this the top of the seat will go here, so it'll mm -hmm. keep from pushing up and being uncomfortable. Okay. Um, a, lot so, of, a lot of people mm -hmm. will say, I, I'm not going to wear my jacket because it's uncomfortable. And I say, show, show me your jacket. Mm -hmm. And they probably have one for, for motorboating that has foam all the way down to the bottom. There you go. Okay. And it hits the seat and it rides up and you see their, their shoulders are way up here. And I say, well, you got the wrong jacket. You know, you, 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 wouldn't, you wouldn't go hiking in high heels. You don't you don't <laughs> you, you don't go paddling in a, in a regular boating jacket. So that's that's okay. The so, analogy there. So for in a motorboat, you would wear a different kind of jacket. As you say, it goes right down to your yeah below it, your waist. They they tend to be mm -hmm. more square cut. You could wear this in your motorboat also, mm -hmm. um, but but different style. And then uh, let's say um, a water jet. Jet ski. Okay. What um, would you wear like that one? No, you wouldn't wear that one. And actually. Uh, the, Good point when if you're choosing a life jacket and you're going shopping mm -hmm. is to open the jacket up and read the label that's printed or is, is sewn into the jacket. Okay. Because that'll give you all kinds of information is whether this is the jacket for the kind of boating that you want to do. So you're going to have your, 
your size, it's going to say Coast Guard approved and you mm -hmm. want a Coast Guard approved life jacket. And then somewhere in here in the tiny print, is, it's going to say this life jacket is, is approved for the particular kind of activity. Gotcha. And this one will say um, for, for paddling and, and not for um, toad sports or personal watercraft, mm -hmm. um, which are the jet skis, wave runner, sea dews. So this one I could wear on my motorboat. This one I could wear um, paddling. I could wear it sailing. Uh, but if I have a personal watercraft, that jet ski water, uh, jet ski sea dew, um, you want to have one that this, when you read the label, it says approved for toad sports and personal mm -hmm. watercraft, and it's going to say impact. It's going to say strength tested okay. for, and it'll give you a mile per hour. Some of them are 50, some I are no 100. Idea. I didn't know this. Um, so if you've got a jet ski, um, if you um, tube, or if you um, water ski. Mm -hmm. You'll want to have a jacket that's specific for those activities, and that jacket will be low in the back and, and won't feel good in your kayak. Mm -hmm. uh, but that strength testing is what's important because it means the the material and the, the 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 zips and the clips and everything will withstand you falling off at that speed, oh, wow. and so it's not going to shred from your body. Not okay. personal protection, but it'll still be on you when you crash into the water at a high speed. This is interesting because you know. For people like me who don't, I'm not on the water very often. Oops. Yeah, I said I was going to pull you that You did off. it. You did a good job of doing that. Oop. There you go. Um, you, we think of the life jackets are those old goofy orange ones, <laughs> you know, like from Gilligan's Island or something. Okay. There we go. Okay. Uh, and well, and we also think of them as a magic bullet. Yeah. I've yeah. got it with me. I'm okay. Yeah. Or, or, or they've been in the boat and they're now, uh, that no one's checked them in 10 years and they're all decayed and, and yep. waterlogged or, or dry rot or whatever. Yep, yep. And that's another piece with your life jacket is, is at the beginning of the season, you want to check to make sure that all the zips and the clips and the ties mm -hmm. are in good shape, um, that the material hasn't ripped or the seams haven't come apart or it hasn't been out in the sun so long that it's uh, become frail because it, it'll fall apart. And one, of the, one of the folks that I do some, some safety with, uh, he was at his, his personal camp with family and they were water skiing and um, dropped the guy off, he fell, and they were going back to pick him up and they could see all these pieces of foam oh. on top of the water. Um, he had fallen, he had an old life jacket yep. and it had, it, it it had fallen apart and all the foam came out and, and he was not, not protected. So oh it, it does happen. Mm. Okay, so obviously the rule of thumb is you get in a boat, everybody with a jacket. That's, you know, for the wear it program, you know, that's the first thing we say. Oh, yeah. I open my boating safety classes with, you know, we're going to be here for eight hours, but if I could tell you four simple words and you pay attention to me, you can increase your chances of being safe. And it's just, just wear your life jacket. Um, tough, but it's the toughest thing to convince people. Yeah. Um, and people worry about their hair, their, their clothes, you know, they make up, like you say, all kinds of excuses. I know a friend of mine uh, in Rotary, uh, we went boating one day, and he didn't even put the key into the ignition until he saw everybody yep. with a life jacket. I go, yep. good for you, man. And, and that's what we say, that if it's your boat, it's your rules. Yeah. Uh, there, there's only four times legally in New York State that you need to wear a life jacket, and that would be if you have a child that, that's under 12. Mm -hmm. they're, they're required by law to wear a life jacket. Um, you as the owner of the boat or you as, as the person providing the kayaks or, or whatever can have stricter rules. Mm -hmm. um, if you're being towed behind a boat, so if you're you're in a, a tube, or water skiing, or anything that's that's behind the boat, you must have a life jacket, and that's where you're going to want to think of that life jacket with the strength test rating, the proper one. Um, the other is um, personal watercraft, so those jet skis, wave runners, sea dews, those are also required to wear, and we find because that's been a mandatory requirement for adults at all times. Rarely does anybody drown. Mm -hmm. There that if you have a, a PWC accident. It's quite often because you've hit something or you've fallen off and you've been, been injured but not drowned if you're following the rules. And then the last one is, is the cold water law, um, which it says that if your boat is, is 21 feet or less from November 1st through May 1st, uh, you must wear a life jacket. And it doesn't matter what kind of boat. And so that, that was actually kind of landmark legislation in that it was the first time that adults were required to wear uh, a life jacket in a motorboat, hmm. and, and it's cold water times. <clears throat> so hypothermia, all that. I, well, and you should you should live so long to to, to succumb to hypothermia mm -hmm. that that the initial piece with if again you're you 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 
have that out of boat experience. Yeah, if the water is very cold, um, that initial hit to the water, um, which is called cold shock. Yeah. Um, you know, it's sort of like, you know, if you ever stepped in the shower and it's not quite as warm <laughs> as you thought as it should have been, and you go, <gasps> well, yeah. now you think you submerge your whole body. So you, you can gasp. Um, if your head is under the water and you gasp and you get water in your lungs, it's all over as fast as that. Oh um, you hyperventilate. There's some physiological changes that happen. That's very quick, and you have to survive that particular phase. If you have a life jacket on, chances are your head doesn't go under, you're floating. Um, you, once once your, the hyperventilation passes, um, which can be from zero to five minutes, yeah. um, after that you go into kind of um, the swimming failure phase where it's just too cold. Um, that The cold water is sapping all the ability for you <laughs> to have strength and for oh, your motor and muscle yeah. control. So even if you're a swimmer, you can't swim if you can't control. And mm -hmm. I think everybody's probably had their hands get cold and you can't, you know, you can't put the key in the ignition or whatever. Yeah, you yeah, um, Because yeah. you're, you're, and that's happening systematically in your whole body. So you can't swim even if you're a swimmer. Wow. Again, if you have a life jacket on, then that's holding you up and buying you time to make a, a call, use your, your visual distress signals. Um, and then after that, hypothermia can set in. Mm -hmm. So you, and that cold phase, cold, um, swimming failure phase, may, may be 10 minutes to 30 minutes, depending on how tough you are. And then hypothermia, mm. which if you're around for 30 minutes, chances are maybe somebody's gonna be able to rescue you. Okay, and I had a question that I wrote down before the show, and I know this probably seems like a simplistic question, but I don't know, let's say you're out boating and somebody does fall in the water and you can't get them back into the boat, who do you call? Who do you call? Well, you, you call 911. All right, so 911. And, and let 911 know where you are. Sometimes that can be tricky because there's not many addresses out on the water. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other is um, if you have a marine band radio, mm -hmm. and if you're a boater, even on Chautauqua Lake, definitely if you're out on Lake Erie, is to have your marine band radio because you can then make a call and everybody who has a radio is area. listening. Okay. Um, so if, if you're out on Chautauqua Lake, you have a marine band radio, and today they're out patrolling. I uh, talked with, with, with Greg Paternitti this morning, and mm -hmm. he said they'll be out there making sure that folks are safe, and they'll be checking life jackets and things. Okay. But if you have marine band radio, you have, you have an incident that you need them, you can, you can call on that marine band radio, and they'll hear it because they monitor, plus everybody else who has a radio will hear it. Mm -hmm. So if you need help, um, somebody might be right right nearby who can come and, and, and come over and assist you. So 911, if you're just in a canoe or whatever, uh, I think I'm in Virtus Bay yep. or I'm in and Asheville if, Bay. Or yep. If you can, can describe who you are, what the incident is, how many people are involved, where do you, where do you think you are? Um, you know, if you can see something on the shore, you may know where you are in Chautauqua Lake or you may have a landmark. Now on these vests, for instance, um, I think, on life preservers on airplanes, they have a whistle or a light or something? Yeah, and actually what do these have? Yeah, that's, these, it depends. Some of them, a lot of them are coming with a, with a whistle. This one, this one has a whistle. If you don't have, have a whistle, um, you should, should add one. Mm -hmm. And with paddlecraft, because that's my main emphasis today, is, is legally you're required to have a life jacket on board. And in general, with all boats, it's one life jacket for every person on board and um, the life jacket has to be the proper size for the person, has to be readily available and in good shape. And obviously readily available, having it on is there's nothing better than that. Um, having people put it on, know how to zip clip it, tie it, whatever, and make sure that it does fit. Um, so the life jacket is required, one for every person. Then you also need a whistle uh, and, or a sound signal device. Doesn't mm -hmm. specifically have to be a whistle, but a whistle is, is, is compact, it's easy to attach to your jacket, makes a lot of noise, um, and you have to have this also. Um, I suggest um, is that, that everybody should have a whistle on their life jacket. It's not a legal requirement, mm -hmm. but every, every vessel needs to have a sound signal device. So one whistle on a motorboat is good, one whistle on your life jacket in your, in your kayak is good. Yeah, because uh, I'm, I'm just thinking uh, you could be floating in the middle of wherever and, <laughs> you know, Especially at supper time, everybody's off the lake or whatever, and there you are yep. yelling, but if a whistle would really penetrate everything. Well, and yelling, you never know. Are they yelling because they're having a good time, or they're yelling because they need yeah. help? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. what's yelling is, is not a good way to get, get attention. But if you hear a whistle, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the whistle signal is, is, 
you, you could do the, the SOS, but if you just do three times in the series, um, that, that'll make it sound like it's, it's, a, it's a, a message as opposed to somebody just playing. Okay, well, that's a, a good information. Now, <clears throat> you mentioned real earlier that there were some new laws that were taking effect. We gotta talk about that a little oh, bit? Oh yeah, uh, mandatory education, which is for motorboats. Um, there's, there's a new law, changes in ages on who needs to have a boating safety uh, certificate. And for this year, um, anybody who was born on or after January 1st, 1993 is required to have boater safety education card in order to legally be operating their motorboat. And officers out on the, marine officers out on the water will be checking for that. Uh, currently, because of, of the COVID crisis, uh, all in-class boating safety education classes are postponed. Hmm. Uh, there's a full schedule of, of classroom courses up on the State Parks website. Um, soon as, as any guidance happens that we can open up the classes again, they'll be opened up. Uh, so classroom you'll have to wait for if you'd like classroom. However, there's online classes that are approved for New York State that's also on the State Parks website and you can take any online class off of that, that site. So and if you take that online, do you? It's, it's equivalent, yeah. And do you print up a certificate or something? Yeah, there, you get a certificate, um, and, and then you can show the certificate. They'll also then send you a permanent card. So with the, certi uh, the, the online class, are there, is there a test? Yes, yep, there's a, there's a test, and, and they're, they're timed, and you have to do quizzes and pass. They're, they're, you can't. It's tough to cheat on them. Well, <laughs> you, you have to do your lesson and do your deal. It sounds diligence. similar to the AAA or any other uh, driver safety course that you take. I've done yeah. those a few times. Yeah. And you sit there and you think, I'll skip to the next section. You can't get to it because it forces you to read everything or yeah. yes. at least stare at it. And, yeah. and well, and educationally, from 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 our point of view, um, from my point of view, in, in marine services of state parks, is is we want you to know the stuff. Yeah. Um, everything that goes into a, a boating uh, education course has been tested through standards that that are developed through accident statistics. So what we're teaching things that are keep you from ha having an accident. So much like saying wear a life jacket, we know a life jacket will avoid an accident. Uh, when we say you know don't boat well well intoxicated, that's how you prevent an accident. Um, when we talk about safe loading, safe powering, all those things are, are things that will, will avoid accidents. Um, so, and we find when people take a boating safety course, because because everybody out there who's who's born you know after 1993 is going, oh drats, I got to take a course. Mm -hmm. Um, we find that that even people who are, are great boaters, they, they may know the lake, they're the best fishermen, they can repair their boats, they may not know all the safety procedures, they may not know all the navigation rules. And most people who end up taking the course say, wow, I didn't know that. So yeah. we, we have improved them. And our statistics show that. Um, with the education with personal watercraft that came in, was fully enacted by 2004, came in in 2000, prior to that, uh, personal watercraft accidents were um, were about th about 38 percent of the accidents, but they, they were only 10 percent of the boats mm -hmm. that registered boats. Um, currently, looking now, after having education for for you now 20 years, um, still about 10 percent of the registered boats, uh, but only less than 17 percent of the accidents. So oh. education works, and people picked up things that that made them safer. You know, I'm sitting here and thinking, if I bought a boat today, I wouldn't know the rules. I yeah. would have to take yeah. that. I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, because, this is, well, could you list maybe like three or four rules that people should know that they may not even be aware of if you're boating? Well, um, let's see. Hmm. They may not be a, a aware of, of the state speed limit, which is five miles an hour within 100 feet of shore, moored boat, dock. Pier, Ridge Pier. All right now, if you're on one of those jet skis, is there? I, I've never, I've never been on one. So does it have like a odometer on it, or how do you know you're going? Yeah, they have a sort of a little thing. But but what it says is you got to be going slow. You're okay. not going slow you're down. Not going, you're not going. <laughs> 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 um, but but that's for for shoreline protection and personal property yeah, protection. Yeah. And that varies in in. Uh, in local jurisdiction, that's the state speed limit. Um, Chautauqua Lake is actually out 200 feet. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the sheriffs will be looking for those kind of things. 
So, so, so that's one. Um, equipment requirements. There's, mm -hmm. there's uh, equipment that you must have on your boat, which is safety equipment. And if a sheriff stops and, and, and chats with you, um, they're going to ask to see your safety equipment. Mm. And the, the, I, think, I think I've heard the most common ticket is for um, expired flares, which is the visual distress oh, signals, oh, which sure. you're supposed to have. And sure. they have a shelf life, and it's printed on them. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be one of the common things that people forget. They've got their flares, but they forgot to look and see when did I buy them. Was it you know, two years ago, three years ago, <laughs> ten years ago, last time the sheriff stopped me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about uh, right away? That w that's the part I never know. I mean, well, when we're rules, all when we we're all driving, the there's rules, you know, <laughs> on the road. But I'm, I wouldn't know where to begin on, on yeah. that. Yeah, rules of the road um, are, are also another thing that people have trouble with, mm -hmm. and and of course will help help you that because we don't have yellow lines, red lines, stop signs. Uh, yeah, right. You, you, you have to you have to look at another <laughs> boat and make a decision. Um, you know, can I continue what I'm doing, which is called the stand on boat, where you continue to maintain course and speed, or am I the giveaway? Do I have to get out of the way of the other boat? Um, so take a boating safety course and, and answer that question for yourself. <laughs> okay, good to know. <laughs> yeah, and back to that mandatory education. Mm -hmm. By 2025, we all will have to have it regardless of age. And it does have a phase in um, through some years. This year is 1993. Um, next, uh, in 2022, we get it, uh, 2021 is kind of an off year, anybody uh, born on or after um, 1988. Oh, so you can go back so further, further. So it just gives it, yeah, further um, mm. kind of a phase in. Nobody is grandfathered in, everybody will have to have it by 2025. Regardless the, when you were. Regardless, yeah. Wow. If you're 1983, mm -hmm. you have till 2023 to get your Broding Safety Certificate. If you're 1978, you have till 2024 and then, then everybody. Okay, so how do you have to renew? No, it's well, the, one, the one nice thing about it is it's it's good for life. You don't have to renew it. Um, you're all set. There's reciprocity in other states. So if you you if we ever get to vacation again um, <laughs> and, and go to another state where where they have mandatory education and most of them have some form of mandatory education, okay. um, your New York State card will will do it for you. So folks that are listening right now will say, all right, so what's the big deal? I get uh, the, I get stopped. I get. I don't have this equipment or whatever. I mean, are we talking jail, fines? No, no. But, but you know what? You, you don't take your card and the <clears throat> officer stops you and something's wrong and, and you get a ticket, so your day's wrecked. So why not take the boating safety course, pick up some safety tips that might take you, make your day better, okay. may, may save your life. You may say, geez, I, I didn't realize that, that I should turn the blower on for four minutes after I, I gas up my inboard engine to keep from explosions and fires from happening. Um, so I didn't know that one. You didn't know that one. <laughs> and you, when you, you, I see my brain is finally kicking in on, on what people know don't one. know. But that you, you pick up things that'll just have your boating experience be more mm -hmm. fun. I mean, why do we boat? Yeah, yeah. We boat for fun. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yeah. why wreck your day? Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a lot of money for a ticket, but it also depends on what's, what's wrong. But um, what about DWI? Are now that'll that's that's that, a little more serious issue. Yeah. Um, that's a, that's a more serious issue. You cannot operate a boat well, um, impaired or or intoxicated. Um, so our our best advice is that we just ask you to do a designated driver if mm -hmm. you want to drink on a boat because boating is recreational. Yeah. You know a lot of people will will want to want to have their cooler with them. Um, there's not an open container law, so you can you can you can drink on your boat legally, but mm -hmm. you can't operate it um, well impaired or intoxicated. Oy, and that's oy. just for motor boats. Evidently, <laughs> you can do that in your paddle craft, but that's a really bad idea. So um, save save your save your adult beverages for when you get back to the right, dock. Right, good good advice. Um, you got a, a paddle here in front yeah, of got, us. So. Yeah, I got, I got some other safety stuff for yeah, paddling if yeah. we go back to the paddling stuff Oh, absolutely. Stuff I think here. We, we got about five minutes yet. Okay. Um, we've got two programs through state parks. One is the, the If Found contact stickers, and the other is the Safe in Sight stickers. Okay, so If Found. Which are nice and... The If Found is, is a way to identify your paddle craft okay. as belonging to you. So you, you put this on your boat, you write your name, Mm -hmm. You have your cell phone number, you have a second phone number that uh, is somebody, somebody who wants you back home again. So mm -hmm. it's, it's either a home phone number or a, a family member's number. And what this does is, is two things. One is, is it's meant to, to help get rescue to you quicker. So if your boat's found floating without you, uh, law enforcement has to assume somebody's missing. 
if this is on here, they can make a phone call to your cell phone and you can say, oh, that's why my boat's not on the dock. Right, I, did, I, I didn't tie it right. Yeah, yeah and, and that, that does happen quite often. Um, or they call the cell phone. If you're lost, chances are you're lost with your cell phone. They don't mm -hmm. get an answer. They can call that second number, and that person can say, oh, yeah, you know, she, they're, out, they're out on the lake fishing out of their kayak. They left at 6 o'clock this morning. We which which brings yet. up a good point. Whenever you're on the water, you should let somebody know you're on the water, right? Absolutely. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's part, of, part of the important things is a float plan. Mm -hmm. I'm out on the water, where I am, when I plan to return. Mm -hmm. And then when you return, let that person know that you're back. Okay. But so so this is this is a good thing. And if you put it on the outside, it's actually reflective. Oh, wow. um, so if your your boat is out there at night and it got spotlights, you mm -hmm. can see it. Super. Um, and then the other is the safe and sight stickers, which have on the on the on, your paddle, on the paddle. Okay. It goes on the the paddle blades. So there's a set of four of them. And that that was a program that we, we kind of came up with just because pa kayaks are very low to the water, difficult to see. Mm -hmm. So if you're out on Chautauqua Lake where there's a lot of motorboats, um, you may not be as visible as, as you think you are. Motorboats generally will see the paddle motion, so you've got the paddle flipping back and forth. That's the first thing they see. They don't see a boat. They don't see a person. So we, we went with these stickers. Uh, so there's a natural flash to the paddle, but this kind of augments it, it picks up the sun and gives a little extra flash. Yeah, right. And the boats can see you easier. And that, there's actually been studies that show this is, mm -hmm. that, that people pick this up first. So we call it Safe in Sight, and it's a set of four, and you have found stickers. And, and if you want these for your, pa your kayaks, um, they'll, they'll be at Evergreen. I'm going to stop and see them, mm -hmm. Evergreen Outfitters in Mayville. Um, on the way home and drop some off with with Mike so you can you can get there there's no cost it's you know good good safety features for you mm -hmm. uh, they'll also be at the Lawson Center Boat Museum so okay. should should Beautiful. the Lawson Center open up uh, then we're still waiting for for information there but they'll also have them available there okay hold your breath we got a caller and caller we got hardly any time left so good morning Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Doc. Good morning, uh, Rose. This is Linda Spaulding. We have the Senior Employment Program. I have jobs. Uh, there's other services with the Chautauqua County Office for the Aging. The number is 753-4471. Okay. That was the fastest you've ever done it. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. all seniors like to, like to kayak also. Great. Oh, they definitely do, and the lake is beautiful. Well, I don't want to, I know you're on your last minute, so have a wonderful weekend. Thanks. And Thanks a wonderful me. week, and I'll be talking to you next week. Okay, will do. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> wow. <laughs> She's got it right down. Whoop. Okay, yeah. so we've got about a minute and a half left. What else would you like to talk about here? Well, I guess I would just go with the, the five to stay alive, which mm -hmm. is, a, is a, 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 you'll see we have ads out there. And w would like to consider all boaters go out, have a good time. We want you to be able to come back again. So take a boating safety course, wear your life jacket, know the rules of the road. If you take the boating safety class, you'll learn those. Um, boat sober, and then leave a float plan. Let somebody know where you are, and that'll increase your safety, and it won't hurt your fun at all. We always like to say that a safety on the water never spoiled anybody's fun. Yeah. Uh, what about fishermen? Is there anything special on any of that? Yeah, well, fishermen should fishermen in a boat are boaters also. So mm -hmm. everything that we talked about today applies to fishermen. You need fishermen if you got a small boat and you like to stand up to play a fish, or you're moving around, you're leaning over to to to, to get a fish into the net. The life jacket becomes very important. Is there a phone number at the state level people can call by any chance, or, uh, or the county? There's there's currently not a phone number, um, but I can give the the address and That'd the be perfect. Stick, uh, and it, it's New York State Parks Marine Services Bureau. And uh, we have our own zip code, so you just write down Albany, New York, and it's 12238. Excellent. And anything that you want to know. Also, the, the uh, parks website, which is parks.ny.gov, and if you click on the Get Active, there's a boating section, which has lots and lots and lots of information Perfect. that are all centered on safety. Well, we run out of time row again, but this we covered a lot of territory, we, as we, always. We, we did, yeah, all yeah. Right. Well, folks... <laughs> This is helping, hopefully will help you have a great, safe summer if you're out on the lakes, and that's Erie, Chautauqua, Casadega, Finley Lake, uh, Bear Lake. I don't know if there's any other lakes in the county. You got them. I got them all. Anyways, great information, Ro. Thanks for coming by. And we got to do this again next year. Yeah, How's yeah, that? Yeah, oh, this is I'll, fun. I'll come, I'll okay, come every we'll year. Okay, we'll do it again. We'll do it from the water next year. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we can do that. All right, listen, everybody, have a great weekend. We're going to be here next week, as always. 
Saturday mornings with Chautauqua Sunrise at 9 a.m. right here at Access Chautauqua on Channel 1301. Have a great weekend. Be safe and uh, take care of yourselves. Bye now.